This is the camera you've been waiting for, the brand new Sony A7R5. 61 megapixels, a brand new AI-based autofocus system, and a tilty, flippy screen. Sony's released a dozen or so new cameras since the a7R4 and all of them with at least one feature better than the a7R4. Most of them have many features better than the a7R4. The Sony a7R5 is here and it's going to change not only Sony's R lineup, but Sony's entire Alpha lineup as well. Is the a7R5 the must-have Sony camera now? Should you upgrade from your a7R4 or even an a7 IV? Does it deliver on its promises or does the older imaging sensor hold it back? Let's give it a try. The only thing that is the same on this new camera is the imaging sensor. The a7R5 uses the same BSI CMOS sensor that was found on the a7R4, although Sony claims that the new dual BIONS XR processors that speed up the camera also eke out more image quality from that older sensor. The a7R5 has just leapt ahead of its siblings thanks to an all-new artificial intelligence-based focusing system. It promises much better recognition of humans, better support for birds, bugs, animals, and new support for planes, trains, and automobiles. This $4,000 camera now challenges Sony's $7,000 Alpha One flagship. The R in the a7R lineup used to stand for resolution, and now though, I think it stands for recognition. It also has one of the most important things that a digital camera can have, a brand new screen that both tilts and flips to the side. I have dubbed this the Tilty Flippy Screen. The a7R5 is a complex camera, and the question of whether you should buy it has a kind of complex answer. Let's look at the new specs, and then we'll take a look at the new features and start breaking down the pros and the cons of this new camera. <coughs> this episode is brought to you by bronchitis. Bronchitis, you get it from your kids when they come home from school. Get yours today. Don't. The a7R5 has a 61 megapixel backside illuminated sensor, and it's got powerful BIONS XR image processing engines. It goes from ISO 100 to 32,000. It has a 9.4 million dot EVA, the camera has multiple RAW options, including three sizes, lossless and lossy compression, advanced real-time tracking with 693 points of high-density phase detection autofocus, up to a 10 frame per second burst with autofocus and auto exposure tracking, up to 583 compressed RAW files recorded in a burst, and more than 1,000 JPEG files at a single burst. It of course has that new tilty flippy screen and it's 3.2 inches wide, there are two CF Express Type A cards in there. It can shoot 8K 2425P and 4K 5060. It can shoot in 422 10-bit all I. In video mode, it will use AI-based real-time tracking and has wide autofocus for movie capture. In movies, it has AF Assist, breathing compensation, focus maps. It also has 802.11 AC Wi-Fi, which is 2x2 MIMO. It has a super speed USB port with 10 gigabit per second. It does UVC, UAC, USB streaming. It's weather sealed and weather resistant. There's a full size HDMI port, a PC flash sync terminal, a microphone jack, a headphone jack, a digital MI shoe on the top for digital audio, and it uses now USB-C with PD power delivery, which gives it up to four times faster charging and also can be used for continuous shooting. The design of the body is a heat dissipating frame allowing for 30 minutes of 8K video at a time without overheating. New dust removal system vibrates the sensor at 70,000 cycles per second. It also has, ready for this, focus stacking. Yes! The camera costs $3,900 in the US and $5,300 in Canadian dollars. Ah! So is this a good price? Is it too expensive? After we look at all the features together, I'll give you my recommendations. Feel free to put your comments below about whether you would buy this camera or not. First, let's talk about the image sensor. The only thing in this list that isn't a major overhaul is the imaging sensor. And again, this is the same sensor found on the A7R4. That sensor is particularly good. Many fashion and catalog photographers still use the a7R4, as do commercial product photographers, wildlife, and landscape photographers. The a7R5 replaces the a7R4 single underpowered image processor with a much faster dual BIONS XRM image processing engine, which Sony says is eight times faster than the processor 
processor on the a7R4. Not only does this speed up autofocus astronomically, but Sony says it will help eke some quality and performance out of the existing 61 megapixel imaging sensor. I didn't see any areas where the images produced by the a7R5 seem significantly better than the images from the a7R4 just in terms of resolution or color accuracy, but the a7R4 had a particularly good sensor from an image quality standpoint to begin with. We'll have to wait for a lab test from someone like DxO to know for sure if there's any more resolution coming out of this sensor. Okay, now let's take a look at this screen. As I mentioned, I have named this new screen the Tilty Flippy Screen, and it solves all of the problems people have with either tilt screens or flip screens. It combines the two of them into a four-axis pivoting screen that folds flat into the body, and it can even turn around and protect the screen by folding inwards. I cannot tell you how many times I've heard people arguing over whether the flip screen or the tilt screen is the best. This screen is enough reason for me to pick up the a7R5 over the a7R4. Both the tilt screen and the flip screen are hereby dead. Long live the tilty flippy screen. Okay, so here's the biggest part. Sony calls this new AI-based autofocus Real-Time Recognition AF, and it's coming soon to every Sony camera in the lineup when they eventually update. I'm confident in saying that because in Sony's briefings with the press, they refer to this new Recognition AF as being for the new R and beyond. This is what Sony had to say. The A7R5 uses a new AI processing unit that is dedicated to artificial intelligence, including deep learning, state-of-the-art AI processing, and it uses detailed information on human skeletal forms and poses to dramatically improve the subject recognition, accuracy, and to make full use of its potential. Here are the Sony executives training the new skeleton detection system. So now correct me if I'm wrong, this looks like fun, this looks like fun, oh could it be, I got my wish, what's this? Human autofocus adds body part and pose recognition to the existing IAF thanks to this new processor. Sony says this AI processing makes IAF 60% more accurate as well. Sony calls this pose recognition and it works when the AF target is set to human. When that is on, it can detect and track nose, eye, ear, neck, shoulder, elbow, wrist, hip, knee, ankle. The system though actually works more like this. In motion capture scenes like this, companies use markers on people in order to track their images for CG effects afterwards. When training a deep learning system, Sony does a similar thing. They would put marks on people and then feed that to the AI system so the AI system can figure out what body parts people have. Sony said they don't just use machine learning for this type of training, they use deep, deep learning. learning. Deep learning is where this process is done without human programmers telling the system what it should learn. This is part of the neural networks that companies like Apple talk about all the time when they talk about their subject recognition or the ability to pull text out of images and videos. And this is where it leads. Seriously, this is a huge step in autofocus systems, and it's just the beginning. This new AI processor isn't just designed to focus better on people. Sony says that it improves animal and bird autofocus by 40% overall, it can handle smaller animals in addition to things like dogs and cats, and it's better able to pinpoint the eyes of birds. It can also detect the heads and bodies of insects, and it can track the leading edges of planes and trains. Okay, let's take a look at this focus system with people. The a7R5 is definitely better able to pick out people in a scene than the a7R4, and it's better able to keep tracking them than that camera as well. Renaissance fairs are usually busy places, and I was able to track people consistently, even though somebody would always be walking right in front of them. I also used the a7R5 at a children's Shakespeare performance, and it could track performers even as other kids bumbled along in front of them and as the heads of the audience bobbed up in the way. While the ability to track people is much better, surprisingly, one problem that plagued the a7R4 is still present in this camera as well. In my testing, I found that not only does the a7R5 have the same tendency to focus on eyelashes instead of eyeballs, it also has a problem when there's a strand of hair over somebody's eye. Interesting, when I moved people back a couple of feet, this totally disappeared. That's probably because the human pose recognition took over there and it was better able to figure out what was a face. Now, both of these issues could be due to autofocus configuration problems. Sony's menu system is already complicated, but the new AF tools add multiple menus with multiple settings that seem to be controlling the same thing. I'll talk more about these menu settings in a moment, but for now, just keep in mind that it's very difficult to know if you've set the new real-time recognition AF correctly. For animals, the camera had very few problems. When the target was set to animal recognition, it had no problem at all locking onto the actual eyeball of most animals. The domesticated house cat is probably the most photographed animal in the world, and here it does a great job locking onto cat's eyeballs. Bird eye autofocus is amazingly good. 
Sitting birds, flying birds, hunting birds, the A7R5 just kept nailing the shots. Birds in flight are particularly hard to track, especially birds of prey, who tend to suddenly change direction. Most AF systems have to hunt back and forth before they can acquire a bird in the sky, and then they often have a hard time tracking the birds as they change speeds or altitude, or as they move towards the edge of the frame. With the A7R5, it was almost impossible to not maintain focus on birds, even when they made up just a tiny portion of the frame, or when they were tracked with mediocre lenses. This photo suffers from a lack of focus due to both motion blur and from the mediocre quality of the glass. But it's a great example of the power of this autofocus system. This hawk was soaring lazily in a circle when it spotted a massive bug. It folded up its wings and it dove. The resulting picture here is blurry due to photographer error, but the fact that the camera managed to focus on this tiny imaging area during a sudden and violent change in direction and shape is really impressive. I wasn't even focusing on this owl through the viewfinder when I got this shot. This image was captured at arm's length above my head, focusing with the tilt screen down and a bit at an angle so I could see it. Animal IAF has always been hit or miss on Sony's camera since it was introduced. For some animals, like dogs and cats, the AF is pretty accurate. I've shot big game in Africa, and the animal IAF is pretty good with things like lions and leopards and other prey animals. Most herd animals, though, have their eyes farther back on their heads, more flush with their skulls. This gives them the ability to see a wider field of view to see where those other predators are coming from. The A7R5 seems much more capable with herd animals, particularly my personal nemesis, the sheep. <laughs> I have always found sheep difficult to photograph. Even white sheep have the same color fur on their eyelids that surround their eyes, which makes it really hard for most systems to detect it. Sheep also spend most of their day with their heads down, munching on the grass. Bugs are also surprisingly tough for autofocus systems to track. They're small and they have all kinds of wiggling parts, and which part of them is forwards anyhow? Now, the A7R5 didn't do a great job of finding insect eyeballs, but I mean, most bugs either don't have eyeballs or they have like 3,000 of them. But it did do a spectacular job in determining what was a bug and what was not. Usually when tracking insects, most autofocus systems have to just look for contrast to movement. If a bug is sitting still, it's a crapshoot as to whether the camera even knows that there's something there at all. Actually, the most challenging subject available during the testing of this camera was a high-speed train. Trains aren't hard to capture if you just want the whole train in focus. Simply set the camera to a fast shutter speed and an aperture of f8 or smaller, and you can get the front of a train in focus no problem. There are two things that the A7R5 did that's different than I expected. First, it detected and locked onto the window of the train's engines. I could see the viewfinder display a rectangular AF box that surrounded the long horizontal window, rather than just focusing on the front plane of the train itself. I have never seen this before. The other thing that it did that amazed me was it ignored the slow-moving people next to the train. Even though human recognition was on in addition to train recognition, the fact that I had selected train as my primary target caused the A7R5 to ignore the eyes of the commuters on the platform. One area in cameras like the A1 and 9 will always perform better though than the A7R5 despite improvements is rolling shutter. The A1 and A9 use a technology called stacked CMOS to improve read speed. Stack CMOS sensors combine the memory for the imaging sensor right on the imaging sensor itself. They're literally connected, and that closeness allows the sensor to be read incredibly quickly. The A7R5 uses a non-stack design, which means that even with the fast processor, it still takes longer to read data off the sensor than a subject can move. If you're photographing a train, the sensor starts to read from the top to the bottom of the sensor. So the train at the end of the reading of the sensor isn't in the same place it was when the sensor started reading in the first place. It's sort of like that effect in Star Trek, where the Enterprise hits warp speed and everything gets all bendy. Engage. The A7R5 suffers from rolling shutter because the camera, even with the fast processor, is reading a massive amount of data in every shot. The A7R5 has the best autofocus Sony's ever created. It's hard though to tell exactly how good it is because this autofocus is on a camera with a massive and non-stack sensor. I cannot wait to see this in an A9 or an A1 body, or even in something like the A7 V when that comes out. The video autofocus system in the A7R5 doesn't have all of the subject recognition features. There's real-time tracking now in wide area AF, and there's quality of life improvements like breathing compensation and other things like that. Video quality on the A7R5 is excellent, and as long as you don't want to capture high-speed footage, this camera can serve all of your needs. 
For some reason, the A7R5 can't capture in 4K60 or 120 or 240p in any mode. This might not be happening because Sony wants to keep sales of the A7S III alive, but it doesn't feel like that's not why either. I'm really hoping that a future firmware update brings faster speed shooting. The A7R5 can also work as a 4K web camera for live streaming without any special cables needed. Now let's talk about the menus. By far the worst thing about the A7R5 is the new menu complexity added by the enhanced AI-based autofocus system. The new autofocus menus are, in a word, awful. Sony's new AI-driven autofocus tools are set up and controlled via several new menus with dozens of sub-menus as well. Many of these menus have similar names. There are new selections for Recognition Target, Recognition Target Select, and Recognition Part. These seem like they're conflicting, but as it turns out, as a Sony representative explained it, they're simply refining what the AI system is looking for and in what order. Ideally, an AI-based system would simply work. It wouldn't need you to tell that you might be shooting humans first with cars second, or that you want to photograph an insect and not a plane, but also you might want to shoot a cow. The power of artificial intelligence won't be realized until it no longer takes so much human intelligence to make the artificial intelligence work. There's also a new new menu available when shooting videos. It's not the same clear cine focus menu that's found on the FX3 or FX30, but it's similar. This feels like a work in progress, and I'm not quite sure why this camera doesn't just use the FX systems menu in the first place. It's nice to be able to directly tap on things and change settings, but now it kind of duplicates some of the function menu, but it isn't any easier to bring up and use. Even with a 60 megapixel sensor, the A7R5 is still capable of cranking out 10 frames a second, and it has a buffer depth of 583 compressed raw files or 547 lossless raw files. It can also capture more than 1,000 JPEG files at a burst. That is a lot of files. Incidentally, the 10 frames a second is with mechanical shutter. With electronic shutter, that drops to 7 frames a second, and I suspect that's to combat the rolling shutter. There are also three different raw sizes to choose from. This is something that was added to the A1 via firmware update, and I don't think it got the amount of fanfare it deserved. The A7R5 has the new body system that's shared with other cameras in Sony's recent lineup. There's one thing that drives me a little crazy. The A7R5 does not have the dial on the top that the A1 and the A9 have. That top deck dial provides access to much needed features that otherwise have to be accessed via a menu. In any case, if there's a way to access something via a switch or a lever without having to go to a menu, I want that. So here's the most important question. Should you buy the A7R5? The A7R5 is $3,900 US, which is several hundred dollars more than the A7R4 was originally, and it's a full thousand dollars more than the A7R4 is selling for right now. Right now, the A7 IV is $2,498, the A7S III is thirty-four ninety-nine, and the A1 is $6,500. The A7S III is only a consideration if you're using it almost exclusively for video. And if that's the case, I'd suggest just spending the few extra hundred dollars and getting the FX3. The A7 IV is only a year old and has an autofocus system that pales in comparison to the one on the A7R5. Get this model if you want to spend the least amount of money on a camera. The A1 is crazy expensive compared to the A7R5, and while it doesn't have the AI-based autofocus, it does have real-time tracking and the ability to capture that at 30 frames a second. Get this model if you're a working pro with a need to go above 10 frames a second or don't want as much rolling shutter. The A7 IV II is really old at this point, and I would suggest waiting for a refresh to that lineup, which hopefully will have these new features. The A7R5 is for two different types of users. The first is the photographer doing a mix of stills and videos, and needs an autofocus system that can handle anything that's thrown at it. The second is the photographer doing a mix of stills and videos that regularly needs to deliver both high-resolution still files and high-res video files. If you're looking to get into the Sony system or to upgrade your current Sony camera to get the next generation autofocus system in an all-around great camera, this is a better value by far than the A1, and this should be your choice. So that's it for this review. Let me know in the comments below what you think about the A7R5. I really want to know particularly, is this camera right for you? Are you going to stick with a different camera in the lineup? Maybe go with a competitor instead? What do you think about the new autofocus system and what it means for Sony? Please remember to like and subscribe below. Check out my other videos. For Dave Tries This, I'm David Schloss. Thanks for giving this a try.
The A7R5 can also work as a 4K web camera and can do live streaming. <laughs> ah! <laughs> ah!